Hello. Hey, Daniel. How's it going? I'm doing well. Uh, doing? First thing, obvious question. You know, you're reunited now with your brother Josh. What's it like being uh, back with him on a full time basis? And has it made it any easier these last few weeks uh, as the practice has started? Hey, um, yeah, appreciate the question. I think being back with Josh, it's very natural. Um, it's really comforting just being able to talk to somebody that knows you really well. Um, even being back with Trayvon a lot too. Um, I think the three of us, we have a lot of really good conversations. We get to um, encourage each other in a lot of ways um, just because we know each other really well. And so I think on the field, that's been really helpful. And then obviously off the field, having people that you've shared a lot of life with um, to just walk, um, walk with in a new experience has been really awesome for me. So. Thanks, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Hey, Daniel, uh, just wondering, when we talked to Josh last week, he basically said that with you being his older brother, he kind of pushed himself to get to your level for a long time, and that helped him get to the player that he was. You know, he felt like he was better than kids his age. What was it like for you watching your younger brother kind of go through that, you know, striving to get up to your level, which obviously helped him, th you know, flourish against kids his own age? Yeah, um, I think Josh is just such a special individual. I think people that know him know that there really isn't anybody like him. Um, that's on a physical level and just internally how he how he's constructed, how he operates. And so for me, um, I don't I think I, I kind of took this attitude when we were growing up as we started doing sports from basketball to football. I I had it harder than he did, you know, and it was this more so this role of kind of blazing this trail. And um, I'm really the type of person where him, I, I'm way more happy to see him succeed than I am at my own success, you know, cause it's like, I have a part in this, you know? Um, so seeing him get to uh, do things like go to the opening and um, just achieve heights, um, like for his age group, um, especially after I, I left for college was just um, really validating that um, all the hardships that I went through weren't for nothing. And um, even now he knows uh, seeing him do well is just like the best for me. Um, yeah, so. Was there was there an age that he, you kind of felt he might've gotten to your level and it made you push a little harder? Like kind of a, no way is my younger brother gonna be. Yeah, honestly, we're, we, we don't really operate like that. It's not really um, a competitive deal between us. I think if we, um, and it's funny because I was actually talking to some guys on the team about this um, as recently as today. Um, they were telling me how when I got in, people expected me and Josh to be just like, you know, 1A, 1B. But in all reality, we're so different, you know, and um, he's more like fire. I'm like water, you know. And so like even as athletes, like we're way different. So it's not really like this comparable thing where we both play outside receivers and we both, you know, our game is like getting deep balls or jump balls or like, you know, running slants and stuff. Like we have very different games, you know, but at the same time, we are really intentional about just operating within a way where we know um, we're on the same team. His success is my success. My success is his success. So I don't think it, it was ever a thing for me where it's like, get to my level, but it's just like, man, we got to do this. Like, I need you to come on. You know, and so um, the only moments I can think of, uh, Nico, that was like that was probably in high school when he made the jump from JV to varsity. And then at SC, um, when it was like I was playing and he was on the cusp of playing, you know, because um, we always just wanted to do it together. And I think both times he, he responded really well. And um, there's nobody more happy or proud watching him these days than me. Cause I've seen the whole journey. So it's been awesome. Thanks so much, Daniel. Yeah. Daniel, I'm, I'm curious 
what it was like to grow up with Josh. And, and if, if the dynamic is true that you guys are kind of almost polar opposites, what was it like to grow up with somebody that, I guess my impression of Josh has always been that he's been so self-assured and confident and willing to speak his mind and, and, and be, you know, that kind of a person. Um, what was it like to kind of grow up with a little brother like that? And I mean, from a, from an older brother's perspective, was there ever like a dude, shut up kind of thing going on in your relationship? Um, yeah, it's just, I don't know. I think the areas that, Josh is really good in and strong in those are areas that I could be better at and vice versa is true and my mom always told us uh she would pray to God to to have twins but she ended us up having us and we're 15 months apart you know so it's it's kind of crazy how the dynamic is um we just feed off each other so growing up if we were to go on a visit or something like that Josh would be in the front asking questions like not afraid to you know establish his presence like i'm here you know and i'd just be honestly like kind of beside him but not really saying a lot but just like taking a lot in like very observant very like listening paying attention to the details and stuff like that so it was interesting just us growing into being comfortable with how each other um operated and there's definitely some frustration like man like i wish you were more like me or him wishing that I was more like him. But at the end of the day, it's just, um, I think it's something that we try not to take for granted having each other, you know, um, the year or when he left, um, cause we lived together at sea when he left. Um, I know it was tough on both of us cause it was like, dang, it was the first time since um, high school, you know, where we haven't been in the same space and um, as different as we might be, it's like, that's my best friend, you know? Um, there's nobody that, uh, you know, he can make me laugh like nobody can. Like, I can make him laugh like nobody can. We just, um, I don't know. We just, we work so well together. So um, it was awesome. It was awesome. I cherish it a lot. And I know in these days we're trying to make the most of it too because we don't know what the future holds, you know, when we're next going to be living in the same city or, you know, just doing life like this. So we're definitely trying to just savor it every moment that we can. If I could ask an on-field follow-up, just to ask about your recruitment um, as a graduate transfer. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously Illinois had so much talent at the tight end position anyway. Um, what went into your decision to go to Illinois and, and to be, again, confident and self-assured that you could make an impact and, and, and have, a, have a role on this football team? Yeah, um, appreciate the question. Trying to figure out how to answer in a way that would make sense. But uh, I don't know. I think um, me and my brother, uh, we both, when it comes to big decisions in our life, I think we really lean heavily on like, God, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? You know, versus, uh, at least I'll speak for myself. Like, I, I never want to be this person. It's like, all right, I got these paths in front of me. I'm going to go here. Lord, bless, bless wherever I'm choosing, you know? And so uh, even the process to go in the portal and everything that came with that, it wasn't just like a, a whim thing. It was something that was very um, carefully considered and um, well thought out. And so when it came to where to go, that, that was my process, you know? And for me, just just praying and and seeking the lord on wherever you want me to go i'm gonna go and um there is definitely um a good number of schools that showed interest a lot of opportunities but um whatever reason in my heart like i knew this was the place that i was gonna go you know this is the place that i was supposed to go and so um i have no idea if that makes sense but that was <laughs> That was my process uh, and getting here and getting to meet DJ and, and getting to meet Luke, um, getting to play for Coach C has just been incredible. I love the guys so much. Um, a lot of fun is had in our room um, and uh, a lot of personalities as well. So it's all it's it's been exciting. It perfect sense. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah.
Hey, Daniel, nice to see you face to face. Uh, finally, it's uh, good to see you. Um, your, your brother and your mom both talk about the cul-de-sac in Georgia uh, that right. used to play basketball. And um, wh what do you remember about those days of, you know, sports and you and Josh going at it? Yeah, man. Um, cul-de-sac, legendary. I remember a lot. I mean, when you say that, I think of Josh kicking a soccer ball from, you know, basically the street where the cars uh, drove all the way to the house and breaking lights. And I think of, uh, you know, us just hours of playing catch up there, football. Um, but the most time we spent in that cul-de-sac was just was shooting hoops, you know, all day. Every day we'd shoot till 11, 12, whenever our parents would tell us to come in. So um, getting to go home briefly with Josh over quarantine, um, we didn't get to spend that much time in Georgia. Um, especially after we had left to be in LA at USC. So kind of going back where it all started um, just from when we were small, just instilling that work ethic of um, if we're going to do this, we got to do it with a whole heart. We got to pursue excellence. We got to pursue um, just making good on the gifts that we feel like we've been given, you know, and um, that's where the love for the game happened in that cul-de-sac, you know, and so uh, it is a, uh, it's a fun place for me, a place that's really special in my heart. And um, yeah, I miss it. I hope I get to go back, go back there at some point soon. After um, the season. As a younger brother myself, I know the benefit of being able to watch an older brother kind of go through the process first. Yeah. Uh, Josh talked about how important that was to him. But was there anything you learned from him watching him last year kind of have the success he had at Illinois? Was there anything you as an older brother learned from your younger brother? Yeah, um, Josh is a, he's an overcomer. Um, I think, I don't, I don't think anybody would really know uh, the magnitude of the inertia that he's overcome to, to be where he is now. And that's not to say he's in this grand place, but um, there's so many times. Um, that I could think of to tell you when we were at USC, when we would have these conversations um, where we lived, where he'd look at me and I would just see, uh, it's like the fight was was leaving him, you know, and where it was just like, dude, am I even good at this game? You know, um, can I even play at this level? I'm treated, you know, in this way, X, Y, and Z, but it's like, I know I can do this, but it's like, do I need to be done? You know, and it's so crazy because I can, Remember like yesterday, a conversation I had with Josh like that, a conversation I had with Wole like that, where they're telling me like, man, almost like, I don't know if I want to play anymore, you know? And for me getting to watch them both last year, because um, Wole is like my brother as well. Um, it was so awesome just to see them come out on the other side and, um, not really even prove to other people, but prove to themselves, like, I know that I'm good at this game. Like, I know that I can do this. I know that I can be a leader in this space. I know that I can uh, stand on my experiences and be better because of them, you know? And so I learned a ton just by watching it. Um, more inspiring than anything. And I know not just me, uh, I'd be at SC, guys that were in our receivers room, um, they'd come up to me after every week um, especially if Josh would have a good game. Like, man, Josh is giving, he's giving hope, you know, like, and it's no disrespect to SC. Like, we love USC. It's a huge part of our story. Um, he was, like, buried there, you know, um, unfortunately, for whatever reason, whether it's injury or whatever. And um, just people getting to see he could come from that to having a prominent role and, um impacting the game that in ways that we know he can. And I think last year he was just scratching the surface and really excited to see what he does in these coming weeks. Cause I think it's going to be um, just so much farther and beyond um, what I guess y'all have seen, but, uh, but yeah, inspiring for sure. And, and apologies everybody. I got one more for you, Daniel. Um, you're talking a lot about your brother and how much joy you take into that. Yeah. But obviously, this is this year's a part of your journey. Um, what do you hope to get out of this part of your journey at Illinois? 
I don't know. I think um, I've been through a ton, you know, and uh, I've learned to just love the process, you know, and I'm, I'm grateful for this new chapter in the process, you know, this new um, experience in this new place. Uh, kind of uncomfortable stepping out a little bit, but I think it's it's just needed for my growth. And for me, I'm just trying to put um, exclamation point on my college career. I'm trying to, uh, you know, have it end on a high, you know, and, um, you know, definitely believing for the best with that. Hard question to answer, I don't know. That's a good one, but I'm, you know, I'm hoping, believing, moving forward. Uh, anticipating the best uh to answer it but yeah thank you daniel so much yeah appreciate it hey, daniel it's nice to meet you uh josh said you know there wasn't really one moment where he knew like oh daniel's coming here it's just kind of over the course of, of a couple of days or you know weeks that the, the phrasing you were changing the tone or the words you know kind of made it clear to him that you know, you were leaning towards Illinois. I'm just curious how that kind of worked out from your perspective and when did you kind of know that this was the best path for you? Yeah. Um, for uh, a younger brother, Josh is like, he's really protective over me, which is, it's kind of weird, but uh, he would tell me he'd be in the training room um, whenever I said I was going to the portal and uh, people would be like, oh, so your brother's gonna come here, right? All this stuff, he's like, hey, hey that's not what we're gonna do, okay? Like, whoever's best for him, like, that's where he's gonna go. You know, like, I don't wanna hear nothing about it. And so, Josh was never somebody that was like, you need to come here and you need to do this, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he never, it was never like that, um, any pressure, but like I kind of said earlier, like as as days went on, it just became clear, like, man, like I, I need to do it. I need to do this. Like this is like this is where I feel like I'm supposed to be. Um, and I just I shared it with him. He was the first one I told and he was just like, bro, I didn't want to say anything. But in my heart, I'm hearing the same thing. I've heard the same thing. I've been heard the same thing, but I didn't want to tell you, you know. Um, and so that's really just how it was. And so. Um, it's cool to be in the same place, make it kind of easy on uh, parents, the family, uh, knowing they don't have to kind of keep eyes on us from all these different places in the country. And we got our baby brother growing up and stuff like that, too. So it's it's cool. Um, just like having kind of a central place where we can both be for the time being. So, yeah. And he said he watched you, whether it be phone calls with, you know, recruiting services and kind of asking you about your process. And he, you know, he watched how you handled yourself in those situations and other situations. Were you cognizant, like at that time that, you know, hey, I've got someone watching me. I want to make sure I'm, I'm setting an example. I mean, I don't know how easy that is to do in high school and to kind of recognize that in the moment. Yeah. Um, man, I think, uh, Kevin, Josh, and then we have another brother. He's eight, so I, I, I do think I do carry the weight of like I got people coming after me, and they're they'll be the first ones to tell you I'm not perfect. But um, in the recruiting process, I definitely wanted to. I just wanted to do it well. I wanted to be genuine with whoever I was talking with. Um, I didn't want to play games. Uh, I wanted to ask the right questions. And Josh is such a smart, just naturally smart person. Like he took what I did and just built off it. You know, I think when it was time for him to decide where he wanted to go to school, first time and the second time, he had this whole uh, just matrix of uh, criteria, you know, like this is what I'm looking for in this area, this area, this area. They don't line up in these, in these different areas. Like I can't consider going there, you know? Um, and so, yeah, I definitely, um, I, I, I blazed the trail, I guess, but he, is the one that really made it, uh, he made it nice and smooth, you know, like he built so much upon whatever it is that I did. So um, hopefully for our, our youngest brother, it'll be even easier and smoother for him. Thank you so much, Daniel. Yeah. 
Hey, Daniel. I appreciate you doing this. Um, you mentioned, you know, you had discussions with Josh about whether he wanted to play, you know, keep playing at times. Over the last couple of years, did you have thoughts about if you'd even be able to play again you know, as you went through those injuries? Yeah. Um, uh, so, oh, man. That stuff is such a – it means so much to me. You know, and so I'm I'm trying to figure out <laughs> I was trying to figure out how, how deep I should go in my response. But um man, I I think for me, I knew um and obviously I think when when the appropriate time comes is like I will get to go in detail just about like that time in 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 those days. But uh my mindset has been like i'm gonna go until I, I physically cannot you know i'm gonna take advantage of every opportunity i'm going to give everything i have you know um operating from this place i don't want to waste what i've been given um and so there's definitely hard days there's definitely dark times um that i've went through but it, it it's given me so much perspective and it's done so much uh just to refine me, honestly, in this rich way, um, that is, it served this purpose that I feel like is way bigger than me, and it still is. Um, and so, yeah, there were some tough times for sure. But uh, if I wanted to stop playing, I feel like I would have stopped playing, you know. And I do not know what the future holds as far as um, what's ahead for me, but like my hope my belief is that like so many years left to go you know um and so yeah i'm i'm excited i'm excited for sure i mean, know like sc got in one practice this spring before everything shut down i mean what was it like to maybe get back out on the field and maybe be preparing for something and then you know, have that taken away for an entirely different reason yeah it was weird man um that was really weird. Uh, it was a lot of fun getting to be back in a, in a place that I'm so familiar with and um, just doing what I love to do. And then all of a sudden it was just done and a lot of uncertainty. But I think through my journey, if I've learned anything, it's just been patience, it's been perseverance, it's been um, kind of moving forward when things seem really unclear. So um, from that aspect, like I've been talking about just like refinement in the process, like it served me well because I've been there before, you know, I've been through worse than that, um, truthfully. So it's like when all that happened, it definitely sucked. Um, hardest part is not getting to be around my guys. And, um, but as far as like the disillusionment of like what's going on, um, you know, me and Josh just handled that just how we know how, you know, um, how we've learned how through like some tough seasons. So, but yeah, it was weird to answer your question. Okay. I guess in one last quick follow-up to have gotten, you know, back on the field, back, back on the practice field in the last month or so prepping for the season, just what does that maybe meant to you where it meant you're, you're back now after two years? Um, I mean, Football is a game. It's it's fun. Love playing it. Um, I really don't think about it like that, honestly, because I feel like me at least, like when I do, you, you put this gravity and this weight on it that's like not healthy for me internally, but um, it means a lot. I'm grateful. Like I cherish every moment, you know. So yeah, it means a lot. I'm fun. It's fun. I love it. Thanks, Dan. Hey, Daniel. Nice to finally meet you. Um, first question I guess I have is in regards to what it's going to be like for your family to see you and Josh play on the same field, I guess, really for the first time um, in college. I mean, I know you got to do it a little bit at USC, but now it's expected for the both of you to get significant snaps offensively. Um, yeah. Um... I, I assume they're really excited, my mom and dad. 
I know they they made a lot of sacrifices. They've put in so much time. Um, they've invested so much in us, and so we just want to make them proud. We just want them to um, feel like everything they put in was worth it. And so um, I feel like whatever we do in life, they um, they're gonna support us. They're gonna be happy for us. They're gonna be championing us. Um, but you know to give them a gift of uh, getting to do well at the same time, at the same place. I think that would be uh, something that's just priceless, you know, and um, I don't even want to, I just want, I want that to be just something that just happens, something that we do rather than like leading up into it and, and talking about it. But uh, it's special, you know, and we just want to, we want to make the best of it in all the ways that matter. Um, and so hopefully that's what we're gonna do. Second question I have is, you talked about some of those maybe dark days that you and Josh have gone through during your time at USC. Last year, I talked to Josh during the season and he said just kind of getting away from the bright lights and big city mm -hmm. atmosphere of Southern California and moving to basically the middle of nowhere with cornfields around you and different right. kind of things kind of allowed him to maybe find his peace again and mm. refine himself. Do you think that that's something that you've maybe done in your few months of being here? What have you learned about yourself since moving to Champaign? Uh, uh, I learned a lot, definitely learned a lot. Um, it's just, a, it's such a different place, honestly. And that's not even like in a bad way. Um, it's just different than what I'm used to. Like the land's really flat. Uh, you know, I haven't really been around cornfields and stuff like that at any time in my life, you know, so it's just so much new that I'm learning. Um, but I think even going out to LA from a place like where we're from in Atlanta, you, you learn pretty quickly that, you know, mom's not gonna be there to pick up your dirty clothes. Like nobody's gonna, um, you know, hold your hand through like some of the stuff that you have to do. You have to grow up pretty fast. And so I think just coming up out here, I'm just learning how to take care of myself in this new way, in a new place where I'm not really familiar with anything or that many people, um, I think. But like I said before, me and Josh are pretty different. I don't think um, he's more like extroverted. Um, I'm more like introverted. So I, I totally understand for him getting away from the lights and kind of getting to a place where he has to be still and quiet and there's really not the um, number of distractions for him, how that helped him. Um, but like, we're really different in the way. I don't think that I necessarily, you know, I was in LA, but I spend most of my time in my apartment, um, just like relaxing and stuff like that. So uh, in that respect, I don't think we've had the same experience, but, um, it's been cool. It's been really cool. And I've liked it a lot so far. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Avi. Yeah. Pretty good. Hey, I just have one more. Um, what, what's it like being in that tight end room with Luke and DJ? We know their personalities, and I know you're a little bit different than them. Yeah, they're funny, man. <laughs> I love those guys, bro. I think um, – even with Coach P too, man, it's just the dynamic is so interesting. Just the blending of people that are so different, but like all guys that um, really care, um, really care about the game, really care about each other. Um, Luke is, uh, Luke's one of the most loyal people that you'll meet. Um, he really rides hard for his guys. He's very funny. If there's something on his mind, he's gonna say it. He doesn't really care. Luke lives with Josh, so we all spend a lot of time together. We talk about Georgia, um, Athens, like all these things, um, you know, and so love him, DJ. Uh, DJ just has this personality that's larger than life, you know, and I've never seen somebody have uh, an effect on a team the way he does just by how he is, you know, and so uh you know 
he's kind of like the most experienced in the system in the room and he does a really good job of just like sharing um how he's on the offense and um sharing uh just what to expect on certain plays and things like that and um and even like our young guys like they're awesome griffin is a little quieter but he's great um i think he's gonna be a really good player and tip as well from South Dakota, he's going to be a beast. And so um, I'm grateful to be just counting amongst those guys and um, definitely cherishing the time that I have with them too. Thanks, Daniel. Yeah. If I could bring it up real quick, Daniel, since you brought him uh, up. We got to go. Oh, okay. Daniel's got to do a BTN thing, so. Okay, see ya. Sorry, dude. Appreciate it, y'all. Nice meeting you guys. Thank, Thank you, Daniel. Really appreciate it.